Um, welcome to Home Keepers. So glad you're with us today. I think you'll be very happy if you stick with us. It's a program that uh, is very, very current and some really good news. I think it's just abominable how we honor abortion in this nation. But if you get the statistics and all, I think pro-life people are winning. And we have one of those giants, the pro-life uh, movement, and that's Saul Pichon. He's been with New Life Solutions in the Tampa Bay area for a long, long time. And we're so glad to have him. And recently, we had the Vice President of the United States uh, in our county, and he uh, gave a wonderful talk. And aren't you, aren't you thankful for him? He is a born-again believer and just adds so much to Washington, D.C. and to the White House. I'm thankful for him, and we ought to pray for all of our leaders uh, no matter what. And I'm happy to have Saul uh, with us today, and because of the subject matter and a couple of videos, we didn't have time for a recipe. But you will not be sorry that you tuned in because we have so much really good, exciting news. Um, it's up to the Christians to seek God and pray and turn this nation around. We're in a battle for the soul of this nation. And I don't know, I believe our number one sin is abortion. We got plenty of sins, but when you think about killing a baby in his mother's womb, or even sometimes when it comes out of the womb, uh, we've lost our soul. That's what's happened. But we got good news for you today, and I want you to really uh, be in on it and that it would revive you to the place that you'll be praying for all those people on the front lines of this movement. So uh, right now we're going to... Um, Go to a video where uh, Vice President Pence was here a few days ago, and these are some of the remarks that he made in front of the people who were interested in pro-life and saving babies. Take a look. The pro-life movement is defined by generosity, compassion, and love for women and unborn children. And you need look no further than ministries across the country, crisis pregnancy centers and care centers that are ministering to needs of women in crisis pregnancies. It's truly inspiring. I stopped by one on my way here today once I, I landed here in Florida. It's a clinic called A Woman's Place. You know, the pro-life movement doesn't just talk the talk. You walk the walk, and I saw a wonderful clinic. I heard about all the volunteers and, that stepped forward along with registers, nurses, and healthcare professionals. The place is literally every day bustling with people ready to not just stand for life, but stand with women facing the most difficult circumstances in their lives. A woman's place, I learned, is part of New Life Solutions. It's a ministry that's been here in Pinellas and Hillsborough counties for 35 years. And their compassionate work has saved 10,000 babies' lives. And I like giving credit for credit where credit is due, so would you all mind joining me in thanking Board Chairman Kathy Arrington and the New Life Solutions team that are here. Would you stand, Kathy, and the New Life Solutions team? Let's show them how much we appreciate the way they put feet on their faith every day. What a great group. And thanks to your commitment for 35 years in this community and in cities and towns all across America. I'm proud to report to you that there are now far more pregnancy care centers in America than abortion clinics. That is progress. And life is winning in America because of all of you. In fact, I saw that work firsthand today. We had a, a few minutes to meet a woman whose life was changed when she visited, when she visited a woman's place. Kia told me she was 40 years old, she was pregnant, a single mom. 
she already had a little boy in the home and she she didn't think she didn't think she was able to become a mother again she picked up the phone she scheduled an appointment at planned parenthood but before she went she said she heard about a clinic that offered free sonograms so she went and for, for the first time in that little room where I was just standing. She caught a glimpse of her little boy. And Kia chose life. She said, and I quote, from the moment that I saw him, I knew I made the right choice. She said, if I hadn't found a woman's place and the wonderful women there, I probably would have made a different choice. And I met little Ollie today. He was a healthy and exuberant little boy who will turn one year old next week. That's the difference this movement has made. One life at a time. One family at a time. And that's the difference the SBA list makes. And the difference everyone working in this movement has made in the lives of women and children all across this country. And I just really wanted to come by to say thank you and to urge you on. Life is winning in America, I truly do believe, because of that compassion, that care, that love. There may have been those in 1973 that thought that this movement would someday fade out. But the American people cherish all our God-given liberties. The American people cherish the right to life. And we will stand in this movement until we restore the right to life to the center of American law. I believe it with all my heart. Okay, we're talking about children today, saving their lives. Uh, you know, Jesus talked about the children. He held them. He loved them. And uh, he doesn't want them to be taken from their mother's womb in death at all. And one man that's been fighting for this for years, Saul Pichon, welcome back to Home Keepers. Oh, Glad to have you. I coming here and seeing you. Thank you for inviting me back. Yes, and uh, we got to... Check with Kathy Arrington. I hope she's not all puffed up because oh. the Vice President of the United States pointed her out. Yeah, it just turns her on. We want to save more babies this year than ever before and make abortion unthinkable. And she has been so faithful for Amen. so long. Amen. And uh, thank God for all. I remember when this started. I believe it's called the Christian Action Council, and I helped them, uh, mm -hmm. Dick and Sandy Yuri, and all these years, and praise God for the giant steps they've taken. Yeah. Yeah. Now, um, I want to I want to get into your life a little bit because uh, it's like it was just preordained for you to do what you're doing, and uh, I mean in detail. We'll mm -hmm. tell you more about that in a minute. But I think maybe you're the only person I know. Mm -hmm. who survived a plane crash. Yes, that was uh, about a year and a half ago. You've yeah. got to tell me about that, because I used to fly every weekend mm -hmm. and preaching in churches, <clears throat> and nobody gets used to turbulence. Yeah. It scares you to death. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Now, you knew you were going down, right? What's going through your head? Well, um, I no, I didn't know, really, I was going down. We were... Um, I was up in Alaska visiting friends who were part of the Wasilla uh, Pregnancy Center out there called HeartReach. And I was speaking at their banquet. And I'd been there two years earlier. They invited me to come back and just spend some time with one of their donors that had a plane, a four-seater plane. Beautiful. And, um, and so I did. And we're uh, in a, it's a pontoon plane. So, uh, Arthur, we're coming down to land. I'm sitting in the back seat. Scott's the pilot. And... Uh, Bill, um, um, uh, the retired radiologist on the board of directors at that, uh, that center, 
Uh, we're all in there, ready to land, and I can. I looked out the window, and we're almost right on the water. And then the next thing I remember is I felt like I was in a dream, being thrown around, and I was being thrown around. Thank God I didn't feel it. And and uh, and I woke up. I was on the plane had uh, hit the water, and uh, somehow with a bang, I bet. Well, somehow the the wheels came down, and when that happens, then the planes will flip so fast that we were all knocked unconscious. I woke up on the floor, or actually on the ceiling of the plane. I took a couple breaths, and the water was coming in, 50-degree water. So I think that's what woke us up uh, out of being unconscious. And, and then I had to hold my breath. And so I looked up, I saw a light, and it was the sunlight coming off the plane, uh, the uh, wing. And so I said, God, please give me enough air to get to where that light is. And so I had to hold my breath and I just went up and thank God Scott the pilot had gotten out and he saw my, my hands break the water and he pulled me up. And then he looked at me and he said, Saul, Bill didn't make it, Bill didn't make it. Whoa. And I'm thinking, Bill didn't make what? Because I'm totally disoriented. Yeah. And so, uh, oh. and he didn't, he didn't. He went to be with the Lord that day. So from there, it was just one miracle after another. The plane Were you didn't. injured? Oh, well, <clears throat> I've got, um, Six fused vertebrae and two seven-inch rods in my I back. I guess you were injured. I was injured. Uh, but the Lord was, was there with us Praise all the way, all the way. And then and, uh, we, he got on 911. Next thing we knew, there was a fisherman coming over, helped us out. And then the Coast Guard came with a helicopter and uh, took us to the, the number one trauma hospital in all of Alaska, Catholic hospital that had crosses in every room. And Praise I said, Lord. Lord, I know that you're looking out for us. So there's a whole lot more to that story. He's not finished with you. Oh, okay. <clears throat> I, appar apparently not. Mm -hmm. Apparently not. There's a lot more to do, and especially mm -hmm. in the pro-life arena. Mm -hmm. um, and we are winning. We are winning. We walk by faith and not mm -hmm. by sight, not just by the numbers that you hear through the media and how the media promotes mm -hmm. pro-choice. We promote it's pro godly. Death. Come on, it is. It is. It's pro. It's pro death all the way. <clears throat> now it said at the top of the program, if anybody was born tailor made for this job that he has beautifully carried on for many years, uh, we're going to show you that uh, pr that whole story in just a few minutes on this video, and mm -hmm. I want I want you to really pay attention to it because you know there's. Got a lot of people don't even believe the Holocaust happened, the even though we got every kind of history and pictures and all. Um, mm -hmm. But his mother was a victim of the Holocaust, and you trace the hand of God from that lady to where you are today. It's yeah. like a Bible story. Yeah. It's like you know maybe God yeah. just wrote it down, and said I want it in the Holy Writ. But uh, I want you to take a look right now. And listen very carefully to the narrator on this, uh, because you will have an understanding for sure about why this man is doing what he is. Take a look. Sixteen years old when her entire family, her mother and five sisters and herself, were forced to leave their home along with thousands of other confused and terrified families. Germaine had already witnessed the cruelty of the Nazis when she watched her father being killed in front of her by a German soldier. As the family was herded like cattle into a crowded boxcar, their destination was unknown. And although they were told that they were headed for Poland to be given homes and to work on a farm where they could earn some much needed money, the horrible reality was that they would soon join so many others whose lives would be tragically and horribly ended for one reason. They were Jewish and they were an unwanted people. Germaine was so scared, she had no idea what was happening or where they were taking her family. They traveled for eight days with no food or water. Germaine's mother tried to comfort the family, but they had heard stories of what this day would mean. The only comfort was that they were together. But that would soon change. As the train arrived at the now infamous Nazi concentration camp known as Auschwitz, Germaine's family was immediately shattered. Her mother and sisters were led away presumably to the gas chambers. They killed 3,000 in the gas chambers that day. She would never see them again. Germaine was put in a group of 300 teenage girls and held in Block 10. The living conditions were unimaginable. This block was known as the Experimental Block 
where the young girls were saved for medical experiments. Germaine was in shock. She had just lost her entire family, and now she was all alone. A 16-year-old girl not knowing her fate, but was fearing the worst. Germaine's fears were soon realized as she was led into a small dark operating room where she would soon be confronted by the infamous Angel of Death, Dr. Joseph Mengele. Without anesthesia, Mengele began an operation to remove Germaine's reproductive organs. He had already removed one of Germaine's ovaries when airplanes from the Allied forces began a bombing raid. Mengele ran away to hide, but instructed an imprisoned Jewish doctor who was assisting with surgery to finish the job. It was as if an angel of life had come to Germaine. Instead of completing the surgery, the Jewish doctor decided to leave her remaining ovary intact. But he made her promise two things. One, that she would hide her cycle so that no one would know what he had done. And two, that she would name her first son after him. Germaine kept both promises. Three more years would pass before Germaine was freed from her captors. She met and married Simon, another Holocaust survivor. Not knowing if she would ever be able to have children of her own, the Lord blessed she and Simon by increasing her family to include four sons who married and gave her eight grandchildren and nine great-grandchildren. Simon and Germaine named their firstborn son Solomon, Solomon Saul Pichon. The family will rejoice and increase even more with the arrival of two more great-grandchildren as Saul's daughter welcomes twin girls in November. Because of Germaine's horrible ordeal, Saul's very birth is a miracle in itself. But because of Saul's commitment and the commitment of so many other caring people, miracles are happening every day. Because we are called for such a time as this, today's Holocaust of abortion is being replaced by miracles of life. One day at a time, one life at a time. Thank you for helping us to fight the Holocaust of abortion in our community. That takes my breath away. Yeah. What a story. And now God's got you in that Holocaust mm -hmm. business. To, oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you saw that quick, quick, quick pictures at the end of that. Those are all babies saved in this county. Yeah, this all the babies home. saved through, through this ministry. Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. And I've said for years that my mother survived the Holocaust of World War II, and God has used me and my wife, Terry to serve him in the Holocaust of abortion here in America today. Mm -hmm. And so that every child, every child, like those babies there that we saw, in there, every child has a plan and a purpose and a calling and a destiny on their life. And um, God wants them to live, to fulfill their calling, and to um, uh, transition this nation back to a culture of life. Mm -hmm. That's what it's about. You know that, uh that whole story of your mom, how this evil doctor was trying to destroy her femininity so she couldn't mm -hmm. give birth. Mm -hmm. One ovary was saved. Yes. And, mm. and to have, don't you love the Yanks? Don't you love our army? Oh, yeah. Some of the stories of the Second World War, when the Yanks flew in, oh, everything changed. There was so much rejoicing, yeah. and that's what happened. Mm -hmm. And uh, so the evil doctor got out of there real fast because he's a coward, yep. probably. Yes. And a doctor with good intention saved that one ovary, yep. which is why you're here. Yeah, but God, but God. And that man, that wonderful Jewish doctor, helped save some other women. There were only a few women that, that survived the, um, uh, the, the operations. Mm -hmm. Many of them died. Many of them died. No anesthetic. Um, nah. they, they, my mother said they would chew on a blanket. they give them a blanket and just, just bite on that blanket. We wrote a book on her life, um, Undaunted. And, um, and she talks about that mm -hmm. in, in the book. And, uh, and it's real. She brought out stories. They, she never told us, uh, our you know, family that, members. That's, that's what's what I, so amazing. That's what I was wanting to ask you before we get into the other, and that is, of course, that's the only mother you, never, you ever had, so yep. you can't compare. Yeah. But I, I wonder how that whole experience affected her life and her mothering and her, mm -hmm. 
Yeah. She had five boys? Four. There's four four boys. of us. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's a good question. You know, and, and, and uh, But you, you can't compare it because that's the only no. mother you ever had. Mm -mm. No, but she was such, she was just so full of joy. And um, she, she didn't look at um, uh, the, the uh, German people, for instance, um, as evil. She knew there was a difference between the German people and the Nazis. And Hitler. <laughs> and Hitler, of course. And so she, she was able to raise us with, without these feelings of, um, of not only just regret, but uh, prejudice towards other My people. My goodness, and that's so amazing. And so we learned a lot from her, but she had that tenacity to live. And uh, there were some uh, other things that she went through, uh, but she persevered. She persevered. And, you know, you transfer that kind of parallel to the, to the clients that we see mm -hmm. at our multiple clinics, at a woman's place medical mm -hmm. clinics. Mm -hmm. they, they are on the fence. They're not mm -hmm. sure whether they're going to abort that child or not. They come in, see us. We stabilize them. We love on them. Mm -hmm. And, the, and the, 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 the clinics are all prayed over, so the Holy Spirit's ready to pounce mm -hmm. and, and bring a peace and then help them choose life. But they're going through a, an ordeal. They, they, they are, they're traumatized. You know, Arthleen, I look at pregnancy centers all over the nation. There's 3,300 pre, uh, pregnancy centers. There's about 800 Planned Parenthood clinics, okay, mm -hmm. death, death clinics. Um, they, what we are really is a group of pregnancy care centers, and we're houses of prayer, number one, houses of prayer mm -hmm. all over the country. Secondly, we're really trauma centers. We're trauma centers because yeah. these women and men, they're couples are coming, they're in trauma. Mm -hmm. um, my mother was in a different type of trauma, mm -hmm. but they're in trauma. And so we help them make the right choice to either parent or place for adoption. And I think that's what Vice President Pence had recognized mm -hmm. through our, our dear, dear friends at the Susan B. Anthony uh, organization that, that encouraged the, the uh, Vice President to come and see us because um, we are one of the, the best um, ministries, mm -hmm. pregnancy care ministries in the nation, and we don't we don't take the credit. God, no, God gets I, it. I don't doubt it because of the stability through the years. Yes, You've had the the same people. Um, <clears throat> a woman can come to New Life Solutions, or many across the country, mm -hmm. and they'll find what he's talking about. They'll find stability. They'll find kindness. They'll find prayer. I've had women sitting in that chair where you are right now. Uh, who had abortions, and I've never met one that celebrated the fact that she had one, but they told me how cold and cruel yeah. an abortion center is. They are. I mean, they're mean. They are. The, the ones they've told me about. And so I'm sure that with the way you approach it and the power of the Holy Spirit in there, and another thing I've noticed through the years, that ultrasound machine was almost <laughs> like a fourth member of the Trinity coming it, in. It, yes, you're right. <laughs> when, they, it, when they see their little baby and they're wiggling around, oh, it's just, it. oh, it's wake Nine, up time. Uh, research tells us, and, and our, our clinics find the, the, pretty much the same result, nine out of ten times they're going to choose life. They, they're bonding they with that. that child. And and the other aspect of what makes us, um, I think, a great deal of um, success, and, and the word gets out in, even in the secular community, is that we have medical people. We have uh, RNs that are trained in limited sonography. Mm -hmm. And so all our services from the pregnancy test to the sonograms to the STD testing to well women care, it's all free, but it's done by licensed medical people. Do you and have that, statistics? that's what brings them in. Yeah, do you have statistics on the ultrasound? Nine out of ten times. Nine out of Nine ten. Nine out of ten times. I'll tell you a quick story about this program because I don't know, it gives me goosebumps every time I think about it. But I had a uh, gal on who do, used to have the women's place. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And <clears throat> so this viewer contacted me and said, I want to buy her an ultrasound. Yeah. <clears throat> that was through Homekeepers. And so I, I said, contact her right away. They were $20,000. Yes. And yeah. <clears throat> so um, she didn't hear from her, didn't hear from her. So then the lady came to, I think, Palm Beach, and, she, and I re-aired that program. Mm. And the Holy Spirit said, I told you to get that ultrasound machine. Yeah. And, and she, she bought the it. In. And Amen. I've always been thankful for home keepers. Amen. That saved Amen. And We're they workers did. together, aren't we? Yes, we are. Yes, we are. And anyone that's viewing uh, today, you know, we, we could use, uh, we've got four locations right now, and we're looking on, 
on merging with others, and, and we could always use another new um, uh, ultrasound. Because they keep oh, yeah. improving them. The, oh, the, yes. Yeah. Before we run out of time, um, we're making this program in November, and your major fundraising is coming up. Be but because of COVID, it's not going to be a coming-together banquet. No, it's going to be a virtual uh, benefit um, event, we call it. Every year we, have, we put on two in the mm -hmm. Tampa Bay area. Mm -hmm. This year it's going to be one virtual event, and it's going to be great. It's a short, short, um, short event, a uh, short mm -hmm. virtual gathering, about 35 minutes, but it will show. Actually, we're going to show that mm -hmm. uh, clip from uh, President, uh, our Vice President Pence, mm -hmm. and uh, introduce our, our viewers to uh, some of uh, the women who have chosen life. Mm -hmm. and, uh, give, and, and actually, we're going to do a live sonogram, a live mm -hmm. sonogram that night. So oh, they got to wow. they got to come and, and watch this. And it's uh, going to be it's going to be held on Saturday, no November seventh. At 7:15, and we have had the uh, website up. You can get all the information. Yeah, just uh, go right on our website, from that. and they can. Yeah. But what a, what an encouragement today, and, oh. and to hear your story. That every time I hear it, it, yeah. it touches me, um, because you see the hand of God in such detail. Yeah. Yes. He is in the details. He's in the he? details, and it, it isn't just you know my life. Uh, just take that to millions of lives mm -hmm. that God uh, has His hand on all these all these people throughout the. Let's just talk about them, uh, the the country, America. Mm -hmm. He's got His folks, His people that are pro life. We need to take a stand. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, Proverbs. Uh, Thirty-one eight says, "Be the voice for the voiceless, right. and make sure that they receive justice." Mm -hmm. And and when it comes to voting this year, I mean, you know, we, you either take a secular well, view yeah, or you a biblical vote view. Life or you don't. Uh, it, there's there's it's nothing in between, and we need to take a stand for righteousness Absolutely. and for and for life. And you have really. Uh, I hope received all the information that we've been able to give you, and to think that this man is sitting here, the result of one ovary that yes. was saved during the Amen. Holocaust, Amen. and God has him on the front line of the Holocaust of yeah. taking children and killing them. And, and ma'am, if you're pregnant and you're really, really up against it, there's a lot of people want to help you. That's right. And we've, we've had a website up, but if not, contact Homekeepers. I can put you in touch with someone who's going to walk you through it. There's a lot of great Christian couples that would like to adopt a baby. Mm -hmm. uh, do what's right, and you will never, ever, ever regret it. And please right. join me next time. Remembering, there's no higher calling than that of a homekeeper. God bless you. Amen. If you should miss a Homekeepers program, you can catch up by going to www.ctnonline.com. Click on CTN Programs and then on Homekeepers.